Hello, this is Scott. Today, in this video, I'm playing the role of a fourth-year medical student. Um, the idea here is an informal conversation with my committee at my medical school on the importance of machine learning in healthcare. And so I'll make some introductory comments and then uh, do a little demonstration of machine learning in action, actual model building. In fact, note that the focus here is the model building or training portion of data science. And then I'll follow up with another video on uh, deployment options in a future video, because I want to keep these fairly short um, and uh, concise. So I, I start pointing out to my committee that this is an excellent text for medical education and me, you know academic medical centers with residence training as well as med school themselves. Um, this is a very complete book. Uh, it's over a thousand pages. Um, if you want to find it, you can uh, Google the lead author is Linda Winters Minor. Uh, hopefully, you can see that. Um, or just, just practical predictive analytics and decisioning systems for medicine, uh, and, and it'll pop up in, in Amazon. And there's a lot of interesting uh, case studies and actual data that you can model and learn, um, do machine learning from in this book. So uh, I'm going to use and talk about one of those case studies today. In fact, um, one of the guest authors was a surgeon, and in fact, let me go to my next slide and introduce Dr. Cromwell, which is the surgeon at University of Iowa Hospitals and Clinics, and he was a guest author and uh, a chapter in this book on reducing readmissions via um, reducing surgical site infections, uh, and he talks about the fact that HAIs or hospital uh, acquired infections are uh, about a $10 billion problem in, in the US every year. So let me go, let me jump from these two slides directly into the, the presentation here. So again, I'm going to focus on the model training or the model building process here. I'm going to do this uh, fairly quickly. And the platform I'm using is TIPCO Statistica. And so the, the platform actually itself will help me with this, this demo um, by allowing me to go, go through it pretty quickly some of the different, the different pieces of it. So here on the left, everything starts with data. And the, I can bring in multiple sources of data. Here I'm just illustrating this is a, a Microsoft SQL Server database connection into my readmissions data. Uh, what I have here, again, source came from that book, is a simple set of information where I'm trying to predict the second column, whether there was an unplanned readmission. A one is an unplanned readmission, a zero is non-readmission, and actually they're sorted by this column, so it looks like there's more, but we'll, we'll see that in just a minute. And then age of the patient, there are four surgeons, performing surgery, the expected blood loss um, in the OR, uh, the APGAR score, uh, hemoglobin, I'm, I'm sorry, HMB, it's a, a, a metabolite, um, I think it's a liver metabolite, uh, and then the anesthesia score while the patient is in the OR, the gender and the wound class that the surgeon provides again, while the patient is in the OR. So this is an example of uh, real-time analytics. We'll get into the deployment the next time um, of these particular models, but the concept here is that I'm sourcing data in from two different sources. One is real-time clinical data, and the back end is the EMR, or the electronic medical record, where some of this information is coming through. But, but I've, I've sourced this data historically and I'm going to train up models, and then I'm going to, in the future, be able to predict for an individual patient, while the patient is in the operating room, whether the patient has a surgical site infection or not. So that's a quick look at the data. Also, you can see Statistica has 10 variables, right? So 10 columns, 
and about 2,000 cases or rows. So the first thing is in machine learning is I want to split my data into um, training and validation sets. So um, I can define this very easily within the platform. I've, I've created a 70-30 split. 70% of my data is randomly selected for training. 30% of my data as a holdout set, which will I'll use to let my models compete and determine which one of my models I want to actually use. In these visual workflows, I can create visual objects at any point. For example, here I'm just doing a simple uh, scatter diagram of this metabolite and the expected blood loss, looking at the relationship between these. Um, I can also look at the distribution between uh, whether there was a readmission or non-readmission, um, the training split, the actual the split that, that happened. Um, and so it'll, this allows me as, a, as a, an informaticist or a researcher to look at the relationships in a flow, in a workflow itself. Here I can see I'm, I'm looking at that metabolite for these different four, four different surgeons. Um, here I'm looking at the blood loss, and I can see that surgeon two has high blood loss here. And I, everything is clickable, visual. I can look at these individual cases. I can drill down, um, but I'm going to skip a lot of detail um, because I want this to focus really on the model building process, but point out a few capabilities along the way. So this is one capability along this journey. Another capability is the source to be able to um, create uh, re and remediate data on the fly. So one way of doing that, and I'll probably do a, a follow-up just on data cleansing by itself, if you're an informaticist, if you're uh, an analyst, how you can clean data um, in a variety of different ways within the platform. Here, this is what we call the data health check summary. It gives me um, which, which variables are continuous, which are, are categorical. It, I can run sparsity checks on this um, to see the number of complete cases is 100%. All um, cases, there's no, no sparsity in there via row or column sparsity. Um, outlier detection actually reduced to or, or removed two cases. And this is, I can set all these parameters within the platform. Again, an independent subject all on its own, which will be covered in a different video. Here is the meat of the machine learning process where I had now have my subset of data that I, I pulled off from that, remember that 70-30 split. The first thing I'm gonna do is do something called feature selection, which is very useful with very, if you have very wide data sets, if you have lots of different predictors. Um, I'm using it here more, more is not that so much. It gives me the importance of each of the variables on the target, right? Um, but I only have a few columns in here, so I'm probably not going to do any dimension reduction on this. Mainly what I want it to do is I want to be able to select my target variable, what I'm trying to predict, and the different features or predictors I'm going to use to predict that target. And I could do that individually with every one of these machine learning uh, uh, algorithms. But if I do it in feature selection, I can pass that information just downstream um, and, and run that. So this allows me, all of that information is just carried downstream. So I don't have to reselect for every single, every single model. And so I'm running three different popular models. One is a boosted tree uh, model here, and I can look at the performance over time, and I can uh, go deeper into each and every one of these, but I really kind of want to do a topical view, um, and then drill, we can drill down into the methods, and they, we have really good, uh, there's good documentation on this, this, this product, but um, I can look at the, the classifications, I can look at, look, look at what variables are important for each model, right? So that was the uh, boosted tree. I can also look at how the Chade model worked 
with the different brakes. Surgeon is braking at the top. It's putting surgeon one into an individual node, surgeon two into another one, and surgeon three and four into another. And then it's breaking out um, ASA, which is that anesthesiologist score um, in this particular break here. Um, I've got, I'm running five different um, um, uh, neural net classification models um, here. So I'm generating all of that output um, right here within this, this flow. Each one of those models creates its own predictive model markup language. And then it allows me to um, compare the performance of these different models in these different flows. And then I run that against, remember this 30% holdout set that I have and run that holdout set against those three models. Now remember, I don't want to look at the error rates based upon just these models because the, the models themselves may be overtrained, right? They may learn this 70% this set too well and not perform it well into the future against unseen data. So this is a way to let me know how my model is going to perform on data that it's never seen before. So I can do that and then I can look at um, the output from that and I can explore a variety of different techniques on evaluation of different models. And um, it gives me essentially the feedback of where I was correct and where I was incorrect. And I can, I can drill down into each one of these. Um, here you see that the boosted classification tree the prediction was 64%. The fact that it was a non-readmit when in fact it was a readmit. So, and I can look at the shade residuals. I, I can look at the different performance from all of the different, the three different um, models, as well as an, what we call an ensemble model, which is right here, which is the voted prediction, right? So it's basically taking the here, the simple case of the averages of these, these three models and determine a voted prediction. Then I, what I can do is I can uh, concatenate that data together and um, run that. <laughs> I didn't realize it's going to rerun the whole thing, but I guess this gives you an idea of the performance because I just ran everything upstream. I'm building a neural net right now. You know, not a large set of data, but still neural nets are pretty uh, famous for being computationally intensive. So, um, apologize for that one little thing. But I can then see my diagnostics and look at uh, performance, right? I can look at my lift charts for my different models. I can look at my receiving my ROC curve, right, and my area under the curve here, about 82% for area under the curve, um, and a little less here for the CHAID model, um, and then the neural net, about 77%. So this boosted classification tree has the best performance of those, those three models. And then if I want to carry that even further visually, um, make a presentation of it or whatever. Once I concatenate this uh, together, then I have one large set of data with my, um, all of my data in it, the, the different uh, methods that were used. I can compare those against the actual scores themselves and I can import them into say a, a SQL database. And maybe I, I pick those up with um, you know, a Tableau or something like that, or I can export them directly with Statistica to Spotfire and uh, do a visualization within Spotfire for presentation metrics and everything. Once I determine my um, model that I want to use or a combination of models, then we can talk about deployment. And that is going to be a conversation for next time. So I'll, I'll talk about deployment options for, for these different models um, in the next video. But 
If you have questions or if you're curious about anything that I've pre presented here, you can contact me either um, at my Hotmail account uh, here or my TIPCO account here. I look forward to uh, hearing from you and, and doing this again soon.